magician never gives away his tricks. But just this once for a partner in peril, I took the can of beer he offered. Drained it. No, this is not a meme. Moon Knight really did escape a death trap with a can of beer. I know sometimes with Moon Knight it can be hard to tell what's a meme and what's canon, but this 100% happens. Greetings comic lovers and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from reviews of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, really wherever our whims take us. The journey of Moon Knight continues. We've been tracking the history of Moon Knight on this channel step by step, because I feel like it. It's what we're doing. We now have a Moon Knight playlist, so if you missed anything, card end link. Moon Knight is a character that Marvel really wanted to happen spending years trying to find a way to help the character get its footing. He first appeared in Werewolf by Night, issues 32 and 33 in 1975, created by Doug Mensch and Don Perlin. He was originally created as a villain for that comic's protagonist, the werewolf Jack Russell. I don't know why I hit werewolf so hard there. Like, did you know he's a werewolf in Werewolf by Night? <laughs> Editorial would take an interest and would feature the character in Marvel Spotlight, issues 28 and 29 in 1976 under the same creative team, who are now tasked with taking Moon Knight from a villain for hire to a more heroic tone. These issues would establish some of the bones that would stick with Moon Knight. His multiple personas of Mark Spector, Jake Lockley, and Stephen Grant. His love interest, not quite sidekick, but helper for sure, Marlene. His supports, Gina Landers and Crawley, who passed him information. Frenchie from his first appearance would be an assistant and friend, with apparently the world's fastest helicopter. But it was a fairly rough outing, and Moon Knight struggled to find a distinct tone. He would ultimately get that as the backup story in Hulk! Exclamation mark magazine. This in 1978, but before that, there was another attempt. In 1977, Moon Knight found himself in the team book, The Defenders. This while they were flirting with the concept of potentially putting him on a team, maybe. Maybe that's what he needed, a team. He would co-star, though that is generous phrasing given how little he's really in it, and that he could be replaced with any other character and it wouldn't make a difference, you'll see. He's there for five issues, including their 50th issue. These issues would be from 47 to 51. 47 was written by David Kraft, Roger Sliffer, and John Warner, with John Warner getting a special guest script or credit. The art is by Keith Giffen, and inks are by Klaus Janssen. Letters, Gaspard Saladino, and John Costanza. We'll have to do credits as we go along along because they change repeatedly throughout these five issues. Now the Defenders at this time consisted of Valkyrie inhabiting the body of Barbara Norris, Hellcat, Nighthawk, and the Hulk. There is so much happening in these issues. Before we get started, I'm going to give you the rundown of what the overall plot is because the comic itself takes quite a while to explain fully what's going on and even then some things are kind of just left. It hops around a lot and if you're just jumping in, it's a lot of a lot. Scorpio, Jake Fury, Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s brother is looking to recreate the Zodiac Cartel as a series of life model duplicates or LMDs. He's extremely unstable and seemingly being aided by Nick Fury. Dun dun dun. We're not going to bury the lead because we're here to focus on Moon Knight, not everything else. Neither Nick or Jake are the actual people. They are both LMDs themselves, though Jake does not know it at the time, and there is a reveal for Nick later on. But by the time it happens, there is so much else going on. The first time I read this arc, it took me a couple of issues to figure out what exactly Scorpio was doing. And not in a good, ooh, what's happening kind of way, and a what is happening. Okay, 47. Moon Knight comes into contact with the Avengers, and apparently punches Wonder Man and Valkyrie gets a new costume again. She went through a period where they were changing her costume up a lot. So our setup, the Hulk has jumped off because he wants to be alone. Valkyrie and Hellcat are off. Valkyrie is going to the Sanctum Sanctorum and Hellcat is going to the Avengers Mansion. They're both going to go there on Valkyrie's Pegasus. And Nighthawk is going to go inside and relax and have a bath. Self-care. Kyle is going to take care of himself for a while. The dialogue in these issues is going to alternate between characters referring to themselves in first and third person, sometimes within the same sentence, which can be quite jarring. Moon Knight enters on page 6 when he sees Nick Fury and some goons carrying an unconscious man. Moon Knight doesn't know what's going on, but he knows it looks sus. You guys made a serious mistake. You stumbled into my territory. Okay, but Mark, where is your territory exactly? We have yet to establish this. They probably didn't know because nobody knows. Mr. Moon Knight, this is the only answer you're gonna get. There's something about Nick Fury saying Mr. Moon Knight. I don't know, it tickles me. That's Dr. Moon Knight. How dare you? So Nick and Moon Knight fight as Fury is trying to take Jack Norris, who is barred Barbara Norris's husband who has beef because Valkyrie took over her body, now his wife is for all intents and purposes gone, Castiel style. Why do they need Jack? He knows stuff and things that they also need to know. Yes. Jack is back up and in the fight, and him and Moon Knight force Nick and his goons to retreat. And Moon Knight just decides, well, guess he's involved now. He's not doing anything else. And he just believes Jack is innocent. Cuz, I guess he's got a trustworthy face. He likes his jacket. I don't know. Just rolling the dice. I can tell you, I'm innocent. For now, that'll be enough, friend. The Wonder Man fight in this issue arises from a common comic book trope. Poor communication. Wonder Man had just come back to life and was kind of back on the Avengers, maybe, but Hellcat didn't know that, and so she saw him and just attacks. Why listen when you can just destroy countless amounts of priceless equipment? Well, it's not priceless. I guess Tony will pay for it. You know what you need, Kyle, my boy. 
a nun on the town with a lady, someone who will wear elegantly little and smile suggestively over her Shivas regal. This has nothing to do with anything except for the fact that Kyle is missing his calling as a tawdry romance or smut author, but I got stuck in a quagmire wondering what elegantly little means. It's the business casual of suggestive wear to me. What does it mean? What does elegantly little entail? Is a tube dress not elegant? Tell me what you think elegantly little is down below. Moon Knight takes Jack to where Valkyrie is, and there are so many get up to speed boxes throughout this. These five issues are littered with editor's notes, which is a good thing because if you don't know where to go, it points you directly to which issues you need to understand things. Which will help because then you'll understand why certain people are reacting in certain ways and some scenes will have more impact. Which is good, but on the other hand, it feels a bit like homework at points. Like you have to study up for the defenders. And Moon Knight is just there, looking so proud to be in the room as Jack explains what happened to him. Her name is Moon Knight. Ahem, <clears throat> the Moon Knight? Moon Knight just goes with Valkyrie and Jack from the Sanctum Sanctorum to the Avengers Mansion and then just joins in the fight that's happening against Wonder Man there, because why not? It's funny. You claim to be an Avenger, but I make it a point to keep up to date files on all such organizations, and there's no Wonder Man on the roster. You do? I guess this is the thing that Moon Knight does. Moon Knight has files, everyone. Finally, Hellcat, who started all of this, intervenes with a we should actually check the tapes, the memory tapes, and I'll explain everything. And so they do, and it helps. And as they are, Nick Fury calls, asking them to hand over Jack Norris, saying that he's scared, confused, running paranoid. They don't want to hurt him, they just need information. Next issue, the sinister secret of Scorpio. The secret is that he loves beer. Seriously, he is obsessed with it. He really wants to make sure that everybody has a beer. He wants to be a good host, but only if you like beer. And if not, that's too bad because that's what you're drinking now. Issue 48. What is the secret of Scorpio? This one is written by David Kraft and Don McGregor with art by Keith Giffen, but inks by Dan Green now and Kraft also colored it. Letterer Anna Kuecki. Who remembers Scorpio? Why so many questions about Scorpio? Scorpio is not okay. He suffered a mental breakdown. They actually demonstrate this fairly well through the dialogue. He's fragmented and mercurial, ranting with moments of coherence, and then he'll jump to something else entirely. He gets worse as the issues go on, too. At points, it gets kind of sad to read. Self-esteem is a strange thing. And this world is designed to squash it. I'm 52 years old. I've been an outcast all my life, an observer. Now the time has come to take an active role. Tell me, am I raving? So would everyone if they weren't sucked in by the system, the all-important economy. Yet to maintain self-esteem, so many attributes are necessary. Among them, the courage of your own convictions, a sense of purpose and identity, self-confidence, self-sufficiency, and an especially strong concept of self. Now it's time for you to collect Jack Norris from those unwitting fools. Pick up some beer on the way too. I don't want our hostage going thirsty. So they hand Jack over. I mean, why not trust Nick Fury except for all those reasons that you shouldn't? Moon Knight pieces out with a thought bubble that's time for him to get going. We won't see him again until later. There's a ransom call the Nighthawk gets, ruining his relaxing evening and dashing all hopes of women wearing elegantly little, as Hellcat and Valkyrie realize that they made a horrible mistake. Jack is with Scorpio now, who is monologuing non-stop for three pages and really wants a double splash page, so four pages. Moon Knight followed Jack because he felt something about the exchange was a little strange. I think he just likes following people. He's nosy. I had the feeling that Fury was a 48 karat rat. That's a very specific reference. Moon Knight falls into a death trap, as you do, and his hood falls back, and it's disconcerting. Pull it up, Moon Knight. Scorpio likes his wit. He feels that that deserves a beer. He also made sure that Jack got one. My kitchen isn't too well stocked, but I do have one can of cold beer left. Hope you like slits. You get the cold beer. It's the least I can do. Don't thank me. He's not going to. He only drinks Coors. I feel like the inclusion of slits itself is a joke. Slits was going through it in the 70s. Having changed the formula after the original formula was lost and it had to be reverse engineered, on top of that, changes were made, including adding artificial agents to decrease aging time. The taste suffered. For a period, it had floaters in it. Some people said it looked like mucus. And there was a period where the word on the street was, Schlitz gives you shits. Here, have the beer. It'll do you good. Sip your beer, Jack. It's getting warm and flat. There's nothing worse than flat beer, is there? I don't know. Being kidnapped and forced to listen to a super ill rant about beer is kind of up there. Moon Knight gets the warm, not from the fridge beer. Hope you don't mind warm beer. It's all we got left. This is Nick's fault. He told Nick to buy beer. So this is a sealable container that will fill with water, so he better drink that beer fast, his warm, flat beer. There's really nothing that can save him now. And besides, Jack, let the man go to his death in style. A little bit of class. I think Scorpio and I differ on what exactly is a classy drink. But I guess he couldn't toss him down a neat scotch. I mean, I'd want gin personally, but that's because in my heart, I'm an 18th century English peasant. History joke. Okay, that's all the Moon Knight for this one. Issue 49 time. Whatever the cost, we've got to make him follow us or a defender dies. This one is written by only David Kraft. Art still by Keith Giffen, but inks by Mike Royer. Letters, get ready. Gaspar Saladino, Irv Wantanabe, and Mike Royer. The opening page is Moon Knight coming right at you, so we got out of that death trap fine. He's looking for the defenders so they can go save Jack and also stop the Zodiac from being reformed, I guess. I really don't know how to con 
contact them. If I remember right from my skimpy file on them. Ouch. I bet they'd be sad if they knew they had a small file. This issue explains who Scorpio is, so that's helpful. And his subplot is just getting sadder. I can't relate to real people. I never learned how. So I'm creating my own Zodiac. They'll understand me. They will see things my way. They will help me. Also, this issue starts the next subplot involving the USSR. Moon Knight just hedged his bet and went down to Granite's village because people saw them there, and yeah, they were there. They decide that they should go get the Hulk. He'll be useful in this, but they can't all fit on Valkyrie's Pegasus, and so Moon Knight hails them a cab. We'll have to go tourist class. Taxi. It's panels like this, which are why pretty much every meme Moon Knight panel has a chance of being incredible, <laughs> even if it's not. Hulk is about to settle into a picnic when they show up, and he's not pleased and ends up giving chase. Moon Knight's escape makes Scorpio step up his time frame and act his device before he had all the ingredients he needed. And this is where we learn that Nick is an LMD. Oh my word, LMD is everywhere. During this chase, the comic suddenly remembers that, hey, didn't Moon Knight have a helicopter? And has the characters ask him about it. Moon Knight says he broke his comm link when he fell in the death trap and only had time to fix it now. You know, when they were running from the Hulk, not before after he just escaped the death trap and was on his way to find them. No, running from the Hulk is the perfect time. Nobody forgot that Moon Knight had a helicopter and had to write it in later. Shh. They managed to lure the Hulk to Scorpio's lair, where he can fight the newly created Zodiac cartel, just in time for the 50th issue. This cover makes it look like Moon Knight is a member of the Defenders, so I can see why some say he was on the team. But he never joins, he just kind of hangs around with them. Okay, credits. Writers and artists the same. Inks. I'm just gonna put a picture up. There are so many little changes across these issues, and it does lead to some variations in the art. The way it's inked at times can make it look very Jack Kirby-esque, and other times not. It varies a lot, and can make the story feel more disjointed as a result. Let them fight! This issue is mostly action. Everybody fighting Zodiac Cartel LMDs. The thing is, some of these LMDs are functioning and others are not. It was too soon. In particular, Scorpio is saddened by Virgo and the fact that he had created her to be a love interest. Yes, he created his own woman. He's also sad about Pisces because I wanted to share beers and long talks with you and the others while well, we tried to set the world sane. Yes, Scorpio wants to take over the world. I think. I mean, why else would he do this? But deep down at his core, I think he just wants some friends to have a nice cold beer with. Not a warm flat one, because those are the worst, apparently. I wouldn't know. Pour some out for your homie Scorpio, for real, because he's about to die. He kills himself, actually. Let's put that darkness aside for some more Moon Knight. I'm a free agent, a temporary part of this non-team only by circumstance. But if I ever did decide to join a super group, it would be this one. It's a good thing that's a thought bubble and not a speech bubble because it's not as flattering as Moon Knight seems to think it is. The suicide scene is actually pretty intense and sad. A man must meet his own final defeat with class, with, with panache. Haven't I always said that? I guess at least as far as I'm concerned, this one sure way to solve the world's problems in my own. Bye, Nick. Too bad, but who'll miss a maniac like Scorpio? Whoa, Moon Knight, read the room. Issue 51. No Moon Knight on this cover. He's off to have an adventure with Spider-Man and be in the back of Hulk! Exclamation mark magazine. Creative team spotlight. Look at it. Bask in it. There they are. So with the adventure winding down, there is one question that some of the defenders and some of the readers have. Just how did Moon Knight get out of that death trap? A magician never gives away his tricks. But just this once for a partner in peril. I took the can of beer he offered. Drained it. Use controlled breathing and the extra oxygen trapped inside the tan until the drain valve opened and I could affect my escape. Pretty clever, eh? You can tell he was waiting to tell that story. <laughs> That's ludicrous, and I love it. That drain must have been huge. Also, where are they getting this beer? Scorpio said there was no more beer. So that was Moon Knight and the Defenders. Let's focus on Moon Knight's presence and not the overall issues, because we cliff notes that. This was more about Moon Knight and his presence in the adventure and on the team. Not on it, adjacent to it, hanging out with them, tagging along. Moon Knight is presented as though the reader should know how he would act already, but he's not well enough established for that. It feels like the creative team weren't familiar with him, for there's no mention of some key things that have already been established, even if only loosely. He feels kind of incidental and tacked on, and like his role could have been occupied by another hero, and nothing really would have changed. This is because nothing unique to him was required to drive the story forward. His two key actions are saving Jack Norris and following him to the villain's lair slash escaping the death trap, which allows him to then tell the defenders where it is. And anyone could have done that. He doesn't feel particularly defined either, like, what are his traits? Is he dark? Is he funny? And again, that not knowing what he would do or what he knows or doesn't know comes into play. Sometimes they explain it, sometimes they don't. Another key factor of why is he doing any of this or how the other members of the team feel about him is just not there, it's not present. This appearance doesn't add much to him outside of the hilarity of a beer can fueled death trap escape. It's definitely interesting to look back on from where the character would go. And it's nice to have it in the omnibus from a completionist standpoint and to see how hard they were really trying to figure out what to do with 
with this character. What direction should he go in? They tried a lot. But for a more casual Moon Knight fan, or someone not getting ready to make a Moon Knight conspiracy board, they can probably skip this one. But if you're a Defenders fan collecting that, then no, you need this. Moon Knight is on his way to the tone and style that will define him for years to come. We're gonna get there. I'm excited for Hulk! Exclamation mark magazine. In the meantime, I want to hear from you. What did you think of Moon Knight's beer can escape? Were you a fan of the Defenders in this era? Would you have wanted Moon Knight on a team at this stage in his development? What does that universe look like where that happened? Do you think that they forgot he had a helicopter? What is elegantly little? Is beer in a death trap classy? What's the classiest drink? Okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. Just tell me things down below about the Defender era of Moon Knight and your thoughts about it. And while you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time today spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.